Join Sarah Weiss in the infinite field of energetic aliveness and heart-centered wisdom. This is the Earth Love Spirit Podcast. Welcome to the Earth Love Spirit Podcast. I'm Sarah Weiss, your host, and today we have another fun interview with two women, Sam Davidson and Sari Cohen. And the title of this podcast is From the Lights on the Red Carpet to the Light of Consciousness. Sam and Sari have been entertainment reporters and writers and stand-up comedians, both of them. And so it's very interesting to listen to how they created their Spiritual Spiral podcast and how they've been exploring their spiritual nature through the podcast. So help me welcome Sari and Sam. Welcome Sari and Sam. I'm so excited to have our conversation today and I think our listeners are going to be totally entranced with you two because I am. Oh. Hi, Aww. thank you. Yes, thank you for having us. The, the feeling is totally mutual. Yes. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> So, so we have a duo here that has a very interesting history and they've, they've moved, they started out on the red carpet and moved into the spiritual world and they're involved in uh, journalism and media and investigation and interviews and podcasts and everything. So let's let's kind of get a background on how this all happened. So whenever I hear, when I read in your bios and I hear you talk about you were on the red carpet, what does that mean? What were you doing? <laughs> well, it was definitely a pre-COVID world because typically we were all on top of each other mm -hmm. um, fighting. You know, usually there was a rope um, or a barricade some, sometimes, <laughs> <I kept this. laughs> which is so good for self-confidence, right, Sarah? It's like, you know, yeah, I stars, they're it. just like us. Not really. You have to be <laughs> on a barricade <laughs> between them. But yeah, um, a press line on a red carpet, you know, there's all these different outlets and um, me and Sari usually were working for kind of the smaller ones, but we would still get really great places in the carpet. You know, we see the celebrities come by, stick our microphones out, try to get them to talk to us. Um, and Sari and I have a lot of mutual friends and we'd get placed close to each other a lot. And a lot of people aren't super respectful of each other on the carpet. They steal questions or want to step on each other's feet or shove you out of the way. But every time Sarah and I got next to each other we were so grateful because we knew that we would help each other. Ah and how did it feel to be doing that kind of work? Oh amazing I mean I I always had a um, uh, it's kind of like um, an energy exchange uh, on the carpet for me it always felt like what you would imagine an old-timey um, press room to feel like like an old-timey newsroom um, every red carpet always felt like it was coming home so really yeah like sam said there were there were a lot of um, we had a lot of mutual friends and so to me it was always like a big family reunion where you know it was like you get to see familiar faces you get to have this exchange with a celebrity like it was always about connection for me so creating good conversation having an exchange and there was a lot of um Mag magical energy, I guess, happening on the red carpet. It's a very exciting feeling. Um, mm -hmm. And yeah. so did you actually feel like you connected and were having oh, sure. true connections with the people you were interviewing? Absolutely. Yes. So let's backtrack a little and find out how you ended up being interviewers on the red carpet. And then I'm not, I want to keep mentioning that um, in addition to working the red carpet and doing your journalistic reporting, you also created a beautiful podcast called mm -hmm. The Spiritual Spiral, mm -hmm. which I'm so jealous of that name. It's like the most perfect name in the whole world. <laughs> that was Sam. Um, <laughs> so we're going to be tracking quite a a little path here that you two have taken uh, from the red carpet to the spiritual spiral. So give us a little background on everything that you were doing that's led us up to today. 
Uh, let's see. So I, um, I originally got out of college. I went to USC for undergrad and got left Cleveland where I'm from when I was 18 and came out to Hollywood. And um, I really always wanted to perform or be in journalism and talk to people. But there was that side of me and, you know, my family too, that said, let's be realistic kind of thing. So out of college, I decided, oh, I'll be an assistant to a producer and I'll just work my way up there. It's not, not scary. It's a, an easier route. Um, but, you know, it didn't make me happy. And I worked for a lot of people. And then finally, I started doing stand up and um, some hosting work. And that really like just brought me out and made me realize that I really want to do this and pursue it. And so I really manifested this last job that I've had for the past couple of years that was working for an international company um, that was opening up a presence in Los Angeles. So like I was basically created everything from scratch all on my own, like everything I had asked for and really tried to manifest, it was given to me. And that was like, that hadn't happened to me in so long. Um, wait, wait, tell me, tell me all the things that you wanted to manifest and what you got. Yeah. So I really, I wanted to manifest a job where I would be on camera, that I would interview people, that I would get paid a salary um, and not just, you know, per article or per this where I could write and where I could speak to people that really inspire me because that's when I do my best work is when I'm excited about something. And so I did something called um, a 555 manifestation where I wrote in like a sentence or two what I wanted. And it was basically what I just told you, just stripped down and I wrote it down 55 times, five days in a row. And I swear within a week or so, some random company reached out to me on LinkedIn. And I mean, it wasn't all easy from there. I had to basically convince them to give me what I wanted, but I was able to do that. And it was amazing. It was so cool. And it made me feel so powerful too. Wow. And did this include um, your stand-up comedy too? Not really. I kind of let that go to the wayside, but at the same time, it's always incorporated in whatever I do, making people laugh on the red carpets, um, that kind of thing. And I would still do it on the side at first, but stand-up comedy in LA is, it's hard, but not like hard in a way that it's hard to get up, but it's hard to deal with the personalities and people and the misogyny um, that is involved in stand-up, but stand-up will always be involved in what I do to an extent because I love to make people laugh. Oh, that's so nice. So that's amazing that you applied a manifestation modality and and bam, you got it. I mean, yeah. And I, I, I hate that this might be true, but sometimes I feel like I am the strongest and most powerful when I am at my lowest point where I am at my point of, oh my God, am I going to have to move home to Ohio? What am I doing with my life? You know, just really questioning. And then all of a sudden it's like, okay, girl, get on the horse, like go do it and go do it now and really push myself. And that's kind of where I'm at again. So I'm hoping that I can create something amazing this time and go forward from here. But yeah, that's always when I feel strongest. That's fantastic. And it's inspiring for other people to hear. That's really incredible. So are you still working for that company or have you no. moved on? COVID, COVID took it away, um, which, you know, is understandable. They were a startup and I did the best that I, like my boss, when he told me I was, you know, they were uh, cutting off the U.S. division, he was like almost crying and he just, you know, he felt so bad because he knew how much I had put into it and it sucked. But in a way, so many of us have gone through all this during COVID and have lost our jobs, especially people in media. I mean, even people that worked at Us Weekly and these huge companies, like they have lost their jobs. They are permanently fur furloughed. Like they are, it's just, it's just the the world we live in right now. So it's also very scary because I don't know if I'm just going to have to find a new career or if it's going to come back or what. Well, interesting. So you've, you've leaped into somewhat of a new career with the spiritual spiral podcast, mm -hmm. but, the, but I'm sensing that you have that that's not enough that you'll be looking for something with a broader perspective and, and ability use of your abilities. Right. 
I mean, listen, I would love to do this full time, um, but, you know, it's just, it's about money too these days. And until we get picked up by some huge thing, you know, we're still babies in the podcast world, um, but it's, we're growing and um, it's helped us both tremendously, I think, personally Mm -hmm. and professionally, right, Sarah? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, we're, we're kind of both in the same place now. I mean, our journeys were different in getting here, but I think both of us, um, just with COVID, with the, with the pandemic, and then the, everything else that's happening in the world with, you know, protests and the election, and this is, a, this is a really volatile time, and there's a lot of people that are hitting their lows universally, which is how Sam came up with the name Spiritual Spiral, by the way. Um, the, but, down, the downward or the upward part of that? <laughs> the every which way. We are spiraling every which way. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, that's kind of like, we, yeah, we, we, again, we had different journeys in, in getting to the carpet, but, you know, certainly being in this, in this space and being such good friends on the carpet and then being in this space together separately, but together going through this, this joined experience, um, you know, we came together where we're both pretty spiritual, um, you know, in different ways. I think Sam and I are, are a little bit different, but we, you know, in, in doing this, you know, I think the main message is to help people to, you know, everybody's kind of feeling a certain way right now. And no matter what it is, I keep using this analogy. It's like, we're all, we're all in the same ocean, but we're in different boats. <laughs> and, you know, it's, we're all, we're all in the same ocean. Let's, let's ride it out together. So that's kind of what this is about. Mm, beautiful. So tell us how, what your path was like <laughs> getting to where we are now. Um, you know, I always say this career found me. I also manifested it, but in a different way. And strangely enough, I also had my own experience in stand-up comedy. Um, was a lot younger. So when I was young, young, I grew up in New York. I, um, I knew I wanted to help people through, um, I didn't quite know. I thought it was through acting when I was a kid. I thought, I thought that was, um, to be able to, to take somebody out of the world they're living in and kind of gift them with transporting them somewhere else. I thought was just this beautiful gift and I, I thought I was going to be able to do that with acting. And, you know, that was obviously very hard. Um, it wasn't my path. It was like, you know, when you're not on the right path and you're like, it's like beating your head against a wall. Why won't this work? Why, I just want to make it fit. Why won't it work? So um, I had a very long journey. I, uh, I, I started that with that. And then when I was a teenager, it was my acting manager who got me into stand-up comedy. And I, I toured with a comedy group um, that got me into writing and I started writing my own comedy. And after that, I had comics who asked me to write <laughs> for them. And then I, I kind of discovered this love for writing and just storytelling in general. Um, Wait, can I backtrack for one second? Yeah, yeah. Sure. How how young were you when you knew, like in your bones, that mm. you wanted to help transport people into a space that was what I'm going to call a healing or elevated mm. space? How young um, were you? I well, I knew as soon as I could walk and talk to be really the earliest I remember you know little girls would like dream about their wedding day I (laughs) didn't I was like what am I gonna do with how am I gonna help people in my life that was always how I felt from from the earliest that I can remember I just I just didn't know the the platform that it was gonna take um or the the life that it was gonna take so and I knew I was geared towards entertainment I mean there was always something there for me with that that made me come alive um you know so it it was it was it felt like a healthy exchange of energy whereas if I were to be like a therapist or something I think I would have you know we talk about being empaths I think that would have been it that would have been a different kind of spiral for me (laughs) yeah stuck in a little room with someone that wouldn't have worked for you there's no stage there there's there's no there's no energy exchange it's not a you know this this is what what the way you know I'm able to help now I feel like is just um, yeah, and, and energy exchange, like this, something uplifting and inspiring, which is always how I geared my stories. I mean, finding this career, it was a weird path. I was a writer and I wrote 
I wrote for television. That was how I started. And then I, um, I had to take time off because my mom was very sick. She was in critical condition and it took her years to get on her feet. Um, and I, I basically stopped everything, um, to, to, to be by her side and, um, changed the whole course of my life. After that, I, I, um, ended up looking for a job as a writer, had no idea that there was this whole world of editorial writing. You know, I was, I was thinking I'm going to be in a writer's room. I'm going to be in a writer's room. And then when that didn't work, what I did was I took out the idea of the room, you know, I just took out their writer's room and I said, well, what am I? I'm a writer. I know how to write. So I'm just, I just applied to everything under the sun as a writer. I didn't know what it was going <laughs> to, what was going to happen. And eventually there was an outlet that got back to me. I pitched them, uh, I, they needed a, a um, lifestyle writer and a political writer. And I wanted to write about politics. Uh, but I pitched them on a few different topics and they wrote back to me and they said, yeah, we want to bring you on and we're going to, we're going to give you a spot as an LA fashion trends columnist. And I was like, I don't know anything, about fashion, <laughs> but I know writing. So, <laughs> and, um, from there, I, I, I really, you know, like the manifesting, like Sam, I mean, I made it into, into what it was. The stories that I wrote were not about brands. They were about expression and people and how they express themselves through, through style, through that. And, and I started interviewing people and I got myself on my first red carpet and that led to, you know, more exposure. And eventually I had a pretty big outlet um, reach out to me and, and ask me to come cover music and live entertainment for them. And I did that for a lot of years and eventually, um, had some friends on the carpet that decided they were going to put me in front of the camera too. <laughs> Did you wear like a beautiful long gown and all that kind of stuff all dressed up? No, 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 I, no, it was very, you know, I mean, you always try to look nice, but, but uh, no. Yeah. I, I liked except- wearing black. Um, I had a black skirt that I used to love to wear with like a black jacket and gold jewelry, you know, just, be classy, but don't pop out because that's not our jobs. Okay. Okay, good. Wow. So, so you're each dynamic in and of yourselves. And then how did you come together to create the spiritual spiral? Um, well, I think, you know, (laughs) it's funny. (laughs) It's just funny because, um, I think I blacked out a lot of the past six months, especially the beginning months. I was alone by myself in Los Angeles. I was kind of losing it. And I was calling for, there was this app called House Party that people were obsessed with. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, We we play it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. At the beginning of the pandemic, it like blew up. And I was just contacting all of my friends saying, I'm so alone. I'm so scared. Like play games on House Party with me. Please, please, please play games on House Party with me. And so Sari and I were on house party. We were like playing a little bit and just chatting. And at the time, no one really knew um, how to lock that you needed to lock a room because kind of the point of house party is that random people, you know, can pop into your conversation if you don't lock it and just be like, Hey, how's it going? Oh, this is my friend, you know, Alex, whatever. And so Sari and I didn't lock the room and I had a friend in LA named Alexander May and he is a healer. And he had just downloaded our house party and had no idea what it was. And Sari and I are talking. I think I might have been on the verge of tears or something. We were I was, already talking about doing this. We were like, yeah, we were like, of like, we should do something. Yeah. And Sari didn't know Alexander at all. And so Alexander just pops into our room and he goes, oh, I'm so sorry. Did I interrupt something? Hi, I'm Alexander. And Sari's like, oh, okay. But hi. She was just telling me about him because she says, I want to do something like on the spiritual, you know, in a spiritual way. And I have this friend, Alexander. And it was like, she said his name and he just appeared. Wow. Was, <laughs> okay. I think this is what we should be doing. Let's do yeah. this. <laughs> and then we talked with Alexander for like over an hour and continued to talk to him. And he really helped us get it off its feet. And he's been on our show a few times and has connected us with some amazing people like through Alex. Now me and Sari are really good friends with this girl who's in Germany named Mary, who's a lithotherapist, which is like a crystal expert. Um, And it's like our whole kind of world just expanded through this like little app and the idea came and we were bouncing back 
name ideas and then it we're just like okay let's just start it let's do zoom and just do it i gotta give it to sam though she is like the backbone of this podcast this girl does everything she produces she's she books the guests i mean she's like sam is a superstar <laughs> You both are. Yes. <laughs> so, so tell me, in each of you, in your own words, you know, you each have a spiritual nature, you know, to begin with, and here you are being essentially guided to move into the spiritual world through this me through these media channels. And how are you changing? How are you growing as you talk to people and learn? And what's happening for you as you're doing this? Hmm. Well, a lot. I mean, I think you, Sarah, are honest to God, like one of our favorites. Like mm -hmm. you, I feel like you're going to really be ingrained in our lives mm -hmm. um, for a long time and have really kind of helped us. And you know, also, I had no idea how many different kinds of light workers there were before this. You know, my mom and I have always been into psychics and mediums and things like that. But I mean, there's so many different kinds of people. And, you know, I guess the main reason that I wanted to start the podcast too, and the name is that we are spiraling. I felt like I was spiraling a little bit out of control. And I have all these questions about what is life? Like, what is this planet? What is the purpose of my life? you know, what's the story here? Like, why are we here right now? And so we ask those kinds of questions to each of our guests and they always have really fascinating and interesting answers, but they're all very similar. Don't you think, Sarah? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, I'm a, I'm a big believer in saying yes to things um, because I think that creates I don't know. It's, it's, it just, it creates already this like openness and, and, invitation for, for just more for abundance. Um, so diving into this, you know, I was, I was just excited to do something with Sam and spiritually. Yeah. I mean, I've always been on the, I've always been a spiritual person. Um, you know, I walk around with my little, I've got all my little, um, talismans. I've got my Kabbalah string on one hand. I've got a cross on it. I've got a, you know, I, I um, so it was, it's interesting to me because for, yeah, it's, it's about connection and it's about, um, you know, there's no judgment in what we do. I think everything, every guest we have on is, is different in their own way. And like Sam said, it, it is, we're all kind of on this similar path. So it's, it's interesting to just connect with people and connect other people with people that they might not be familiar with. That's my favorite thing. That is my favorite thing, connecting our listeners or even um, our guests with each other. Like two of our guests now are starting some kind of show together. Um, and I have, there's been several of our guests that have gotten appointments and bookings from people that listen to our show. And then they tell us about it. Like, it, I love that part of it. Connecting people makes me so happy. Mm -hmm. Mm. And how about each of you, um, your own spiritual experiences, like from childhood, were you having, uh, whether through dreams or visions or sensing, um, I'm, I'm curious from, from your perspective as being a, in a younger generation than mine, what it's like for you opening up your spirituality at this time on the planet and where where it started for you well i guess for me i just really wish my parents didn't let me play with a ouija board at such a young <laughs> of an age i did the same thing i did the same really thing. okay oh, i think God. every i think everyone did yeah go ahead yeah that's always that's, that's every girl's first introduction <laughs> to the spiritual world yeah. <laughs> Those sleepovers, they'd be like, Sam, are you going to bring it out again? And I'm like, let's call Marilyn Monroe. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I was contacting Elvis when I was <laughs> But, um, yeah, you know, so when I was younger, I, I was born, and it's all making so much sense to me now, and I'm still not there yet, but I had, like, a some birth trauma. I came out breached, and um, my I had a lot of surgeries when I was, like, younger because my head was kind of misshapen 
and it made me feel like I had a scar in my head that I would hide and um, it's been fixed since then, but I was so very insecure about it. Um, and now that I think about it, I just feel like it all kind of makes sense. Uh, I definitely, when I was younger, think I picked up on a lot of stuff, but my biggest fear when I was little wasn't clowns or murderers. It was ghosts. It was just ghosts all the way. They would terrify me. And I'm not really sure why. And I would have night terrors. I would wake up screaming in the middle of the night a lot. <laughs> and I think that probably was also due to some trauma like going on with my family. But I think I was in touch with a lot of things when I was younger that I just put to the side. And then when I got older and became more interested in all of this, and even now, you know, hearing the signs of, you know, that you're tapping into things like hearing your ears ringing um, or deja vu or thinking of somebody and then they call you. Like that stuff happened to me all the time, but I wasn't really aware of it. And now I am, and I don't want to live in the past, but I am interested just to kind of look back on my past, to think to myself, oh, that's what was happening there. You know, that's what that was. So when you talk about ghosts, were, were you actually seeing apparitions? I don't think so. I think maybe in my dreams I was. I I had this very I I had this very big fear of them, and I don't know why. Uh, but what's so interesting is that every time I've seen a medium, and especially when it was years and years ago, my grandmother on my dad's side, she died the same month that I was born, and. A lot of people say we've had this soul transfer in a way. So she's really always been with me. And I hope it wasn't me when I was younger screaming, I'm terrified of you, but I, I feel connected to her, but I've never, I think my spirits have always known, like, do not show up in front of her. She will pee her pants. Like, <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> but, oh God, I can really feel the lovely connection that you have with your grandmother. Yeah. And we don't appreciate, um, actually, and nor is it necessarily talked about or visible, but that, you know, there are many generations before us that had a lot of spiritual wisdom, knowledge, experience, mm -hmm. and in the new world, you know, the, that was pushed to the side. And so all this wisdom that could have been passed down had we been, let's say, our, our grandmother was a midwife in, in a, a small village in Europe, and we were born and designated as the person to take over from her, and you would have been raised and taught uh, in that spiritual tradition of midwifery or herbalism. And you would have been mentored and developed mm -hmm. in a way that was meaningful and connected and was known to be your thing. You know what I mean? You were recognized mm -hmm. uh, and seen. And so in our day and age, it's something we kind of have to dig out and figure out because the verbal connection isn't there. Mm -hmm. But that's really interesting. And then the other thing is when you have a lot of surgeries, mm -hmm. that opens you, opens portals. Interesting. And when you have surgery, you, tr you journey, mm. okay? Your body thinks that you're kind of dying because your temperature mm -hmm. goes down, you're you know, put in a sedated state and your soul leaves the body as if it was leaving it like it was dying. Wow. And so, it, so you go and journey and there have been, there may have been many experiences that you had that you don't remember. I'm sure. Okay. And there can be actually many beautiful experiences as well as unusual ones. Um, where when you journey, especially as a young child going through surgery, you can return to your spiritual world from where you came and get new instructions, get reconnections, get all kinds of um, multidimensional affirmation of your being. And then when you're brought back suddenly into the body, um, parts of you can stay out 
because they, you fragmented and didn't all come back. And that's when we need soul retrieval and soul reintegration um, from those traumatic experiences of, of journeying without um, awareness of it. Yeah. So I'm sure a lot was pre-planned for you to have those surgeries and get a chance to revisit where you came from early on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then um, those seeds are coming to fruition now. Yeah, I just wish someone could have told me when I was little, you know, I could have been in some kind of class or, right. I mean, you know, when I have kids one day, even if, you know, if, if they're very opposed to it, then I won't ever make them do it. But like, I want to teach, you know, my kids about all of this stuff and put them in some kind of class or program about empaths or, you know, what they're seeing and, you know, differentiating things like that, you know, it would have been nice to have that because I think I was just, you know, weird or crazy and my parents didn't get along. So there was a lot of yelling and, and it was, you know, it was hard to differentiate like what was me being, you know, sad and scared. And then they divorced when I was like nine. Um, and what was me really picking up on stuff. But once, you know, I grew into my personality, people always, you know, they're like, oh, you have such a big mouth. <laughs> 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 and I just learned to quiet it down. You know, I'd be like, my dad got remarried to this woman who I, you know, hated. And I made it extremely clear, <laughs> like, very early. And when they told me they were getting married, I went and I go, excuse me, I'm going to go vomit right now. <laughs> I was nine. And so, you know, it was, and, and everyone thought I was this crazy little girl that was jealous and sad. But the truth was, is she was a really bad person. And years later, everyone goes, yeah, you really were right. <laughs> I was like, yeah. oh. Mm -hmm. oh. <laughs> and and it's great you know having a big personality so many times we try to make ourselves so much smaller and that's part of that whole female suppression oppression type of thing and I'm so glad you've embraced who you are Sam me too, <laughs> me too. and Sari what about you in terms of early experiences oh boy um you know for me it's familial um mine um, mine manifested at a very young age. Um, we've kind of talked about this a little bit before, but I, I did have, um, lost early on experiencing death early on. And that kind of put me in touch with, um, I don't know, some kind of, um, being able to still communicate energetically and then, um, predicting things in dreams, um, where I dreamt, things that actually happened. Um, and my mom did too. Um, it's interesting also just by and by that you mentioned surgeries and traveling. That was, my mom was actually in, uh, this, this happened later in life, but my mom was actually in a, in a coma for a couple of weeks and she had a 1% um, chance of survival. And she talks about her journeys. I mean, she came out of that, um, having, awoken a, a whole other spiritual side to herself so I just I when you were talking about that I was just thinking yeah that, that was, that's uh pretty much what happened to her wait tell the story the story is so cool which one the the my, what, my premonition story well like, about your mom how she came back and she really felt oh, like she traveled she so yes so my mom um you know, she was, she was up at USC. She was in a coma. She was under for quite a while and the doctors did not think she was going to make it. And, um, she had before she, before this happened before, cause this happened from surgery, a surgery that had gone awry. And before this happened, she had walked it. This was so random. It was like the summer of 2009. And she came up to me with a post-it note. I said, it had to have been before that. She came up with a post-it note and she said, all these people are going to die this year. And it was like a list of people. And on it, it was like Farrah Fawcett, Patrick Swayze, Michael Jackson. I was like, what are you, what are you even talking Michael Jackson? What are you even talking about? She's like, I don't know. This is just this feeling that I got. And so one by one, all of these people were passing throughout the year. And the last person to pass on her list was Patrick Swayze. And she woke up from her coma the day after he died. It was like he died and she woke up. 
She it, it was it, against all odds. She she came and she had no memory of what happened. She didn't you know she she thought she had a stroke or a car accident. She had no memory. She'd gone into surgery, but she she came out of that talking about also. Her and I would always talk about how we were going to write a book together someday because what I was experiencing on this end and what she was experiencing on the other end. And she said she saw past lives and she saw past lives where we were together. And then she, she traveled to different places and she had a conversation with God and she talked about, you know, having, she could have gone, she could have stayed or gone. She could have gone either way. She saw what life would have been like without her. She saw my brother's wedding. She saw the kids that were going to be born. Um, and she fought, she fought to stay here. And coming out of it, she knew a lot of things too. It was like weird things that she was, she was recalling that she, she wasn't here for. She was, you know, talking about things. Well, when she could talk, she was trying to, she was traked at the time, but she was communicating about things that were happening after that, where it was like, she saw things that were happening in the house or she was talking about things that, um, you know, she told me one night not to drive a certain route and it, it saved my life. I mean, there were just things that she was, she was obviously tapping into. Um, and it, it was, it was, you know, yeah, it was being that my family, my grandmother and I had had spiritual experiences prior to this and kind of it was a, just a known thing you know within my family of like you know, we don't talk about it unless it's with us and our own experiences but yeah when she came out of this it was it was life-changing for for all of us doesn't that confirm for you the the way you're going to be moving forward in life here Oh, wow. Um, you know, it, <laughs> that's kind of when, when things did uh, change for me in life. It was, it was after, you know, she had a two year recovery process after that. And it was after that, that things did take a different path. Um, it's kind of, it's weird that you say that now, because I don't even hear it until you say it. And I go, yeah, it's, yeah you're right. <laughs> yeah. That's, so touching. I mean, each each of you, Siri and Sam, you're you're bringing to light and and giving words to experiences that many people are having, but they don't have anywhere to to talk about it or people to talk about it to, because it um, kind of stays on the woo woo end, and people might be afraid of of being called crazy, like you said, Sam. Um, mm -hmm. And here you are having a podcast, giving people the space and place to verbalize their true heart, their true spirit. Oh my God, you're, you're providing such a healing space for people. Thank you. And it's so helpful. I mean, it's, it's helpful, helpful for us, I know at the very least, but, and finding the people, it, when I, when we first started, I go, okay, I know maybe like five really good psychic mediums and healers. And then after five, I don't really know what we're going to do. <laughs> and, and I mean, and every week, cool, I'll freak out a little bit and go, oh, oh no, I don't have a guest for this. How am I going to do it? And every time I find one, because I really want people on there that I, um, that I, believe in not that are going to rip people off or anything like that but it's just yeah it's so exciting everyone has a new perspective and there's so many different because like for instance human design i had no idea what that was at all mm -hmm. um when we started this and that is one of the most fascinating things to me it has been incredibly helpful for me to find out my human design and that's just one of you know, the many things. And I kind of just, I like that we're giving everyone a buffet of things that they can trust and they can take whatever they want from it. Well, do you feel like parts of each of you are getting um, wakened mm, each, each yeah. time that you speak with someone that between either one of you or both, that something gets sparked in you that starts to enliven? Mm, definitely. I mean, I've been telling you, Sarah, ever since 
you know, taking your class has been one of the greatest gifts. I, it has made such a difference. I mean, we've had two sessions so far, but <laughs> meeting you has made such a difference in my life right now and, and everything, you know, just that I'm going through on a personal level. And so, yeah, <laughs> yeah. To answer your question. Yeah. But it's, it, it's yeah. waking, th- waking up your spiritual nature your healing abilities, your spiritual mm-hmm. abilities. It, I look at it like, oh, you're just in the best spiritual school ever. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, I'd be lying if I said that I didn't get a little scared sometimes because, and like I said, since I was a little afraid of ghosts, you know, and things are getting awakened. I mean, it was, Sarah, I don't think I told you this, but the other day my mom and I were sitting on her bed with my cat. Uh, watching TV and m- the door to the basement where I'm staying is right outside my mom's room. And we always leave it a crack open because my cat will come in and out and she'll push her little paw and the door will fly open. And we're like, Buffy's here. And the other night we're sitting on bed and the door opened like it would if, you know, Buffy was coming up. And then I look in front of me and my cat is just sleeping in front of me. And I was like, oh no, I don't like this. <laughs> like, there's no way that that just randomly happened happened and I literally I, and now I just whisper and I go please go away mm-hmm. please go away <laughs> I get nervous but even like yesterday there was a moth in a, in the house and I looked at this I mean I, I know this probably will not sound crazy to you but I hope this doesn't sound crazy to anyone but the moth was here and I looked at it I cracked this door open a teeny bit and I go hi can you leave please and I started like moving my hands and kind of like showing the moth where to go and then it just disappeared mm. It was gone. And I'm like, that's so cool. Like little things like that. It's not super powerful or whatever, but it just makes me realize that my, you know, instincts and communicating with different things are kind of, you know, they're working. Yes. And and you're you're living multidimensionally. You're not squeezing yourself into some little three dimensional box where you're limiting your mm-hmm. consciousness. Yeah. No, I definitely you know, I, I feel like I've been um I guess vibrating at that rate for a, for a while, um, but I, this is this is different for me. This experience, I mean, hopefully we're helping others. It's, it's also helping me through this time. I mean, there, it really has been mm-hmm. transformative in a way that it's it's helping me connect my mind and my body and listening to every guest and connecting with with the guests that are on and you know, having, having an authentic conversation, um, without judgment, you know, (laughs) with just, let's just talk. It's, it's, um, it's been really healing. Yeah. Yeah. And like Sari and I are so open, you know, if you want to talk about vampires, then let's hear it. We're interested. (laughs) Like, okay, (laughs) tell us more. I mean, I think I'm a little bit, you know, Sari gets a little bit like, okay, but she's still so open. And I'm like, tell me more about the vampire. So don't talk about ghosts, but vampires are okay. <laughs> well, I still like ghosts. Well, so now I'm really, since my dad has passed on, I think of ghosts very differently. Mm. Um, ghosts versus spirits and, you know, all of that. And I know that they're not a bad thing. And I don't know why I've always been so afraid because I'm so interested Uh But yeah, I mean, like one of the mediums that I love that we've had on Cindy Vega, she doesn't like to see her spirits when she communicates. She hears them. She's still kind of afraid to have the visual aspect of it. So like I'm open, but I prefer them not swing open doors and, you know, whisper to me in the middle of the night or something. (laughs) Well, I'm excited for each of you as you journey on your path here. And we need, uh, we need women like you coming out strong and powerful and outspoken and creative and bringing through like the, the new energies, the new thinking, the new abilities. I'm, I'm just very grateful to know both of you and to see what you're doing. Us too. Thank, Thank you. you so much. So as we come to a close here, tell everyone how they can find you guys. Okay. Well, you can uh, 
follow our show on Instagram, which is Spiritual Spiral Show. We have all of them on IGTV, so you can watch us and watch our guests. But if you just want to do listen to podcasts, we are on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, basically everywhere you can find them. And then you can find myself at SamD43 on Instagram. But yeah. yeah. And Siri? And I'm at the the Savvy Scribbler. I make it very hard for people to find me. <laughs> P-H-E-S-A-B-B-Y-S-C-R-I-B-B-L-E-R. The Savvy Scribbler. We will have you have that information in the podcast notes for sure. Okay. <laughs> and is there anything, any last words you'd like to share with our listeners today? I'm just so grateful that, um, you know, we've connected with you, Sarah. My mom knew you from high school, and I'm so glad that she suggested you be on because I feel like you're really opening us up to even more amazing people and things and ideas and healing. So thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. Completely agree with Sam. I couldn't have said it better myself. <laughs> oh, thank you guys. Well, blessings to everyone listening. I am so happy to share Sam and Sari with you. And... God bless everyone. Thank you. Thanks for listening to the Earth Love Spirit podcast. If you like what you heard, the best compliment you can give us is to share this podcast with a friend. And be sure to give us some stars and a favorable review at Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen in.